Okay, so what I want to talk about today is this Java 2D stuff. So we've talked at a number of levels. We've talked about um, the display of components. So we've been thinking about the idea that we've got you know, a window and we've got um, <coughs> various components. We've got buttons and we've got menus and uh, areas where we can put other components. And we've looked both at how we can display these on the screen and we've also looked at how we can link these into um, into the the functionality of the program. So we've looked at how we can make connections between these components and interface and the things that are going on underneath. And what I want to talk about today is something that's a little more detail. So we said when we were talking about events that there are these kind of semantic events, these things that represent doing things in the interface that you do a lot, like pressing a button or choosing from a menu. And we, we said there that that was basically, you know, what you need to do a lot of the time. But some of the time you need to go and you need to do detailed tracking of where the position of, say, the mouse is or what the keyboard is doing, you know. So we had the idea of, you know, drawing something. And we said, well, you can't do that using just normal, using these semantic events. You have to track the detailed position of the mouse, or, or in that case, the trackpad or something. And similarly, in terms of drawing components, we've kind of looked at um, we've kind of looked at high level. We've got kind of semantic events and low level events, and then we've, in the sense of drawing. We've looked at the kind of uh, common things, the, the kind of things like buttons and how you draw those, text areas and so on. But you've then got a low level corresponding thing here. And as well as being something you might want to use in its own right, so if you're doing this drawing package, you'd want to access this drawing stuff directly in order to do the drawing. There's a connection here in that the commonly used components in, in the Java Swing library are all written in this Java 2D language. So basically, rather than doing what was done in the early versions of Java and in some other languages, where you have a operating system specific set of uh, uh, graphics components, here there's this low level thing, and only on, on, on uh, at a level below that, which we won't concern ourselves with, and very few people do concern themselves with, is the actual operating system specific stuff, the stuff about how the low level languages get translated into actually writing stuff on screen. So I want to basically fill in this. We've done that, we've done that, we've done that. We, we want to kind of fill in this area here. So Tell think about this. So, <clears throat> basically, what's going on is there's part of the implementation of a component, uh, part of what's written in the in the in the classes within the Swing library, is that each component's got a paint method. So the paint method is something that gets called by, um, by the system when it needs to be displayed. So the triggers that cause this, and this is all, you know, you don't need to deal with this explicitly. This all happens when you create one of these objects and then basically it's all dealt with in that thread that's dealing with the graphics handling, is that it, it listens out for changes to the windowing environment. So, 
paint is called when something's shown for the first time or when something needs to be repaired or when a window has been resized or when something like the text in a component or the, the image that's displayed on it changes. So, and this percolates down from a larger component to the smaller component. So we might resize this window and as a result, things like the, you know, the buttons might need to be rescaled or something. So basically this goes, that this is the hierarchical thing, yeah? If the window is a container, it's a sort of home container, it's a frame, which contains a panel, which in turn might contain other panels, which in turn contains buttons. And so when you change the size of that window, that calls paint on the frame, which in turn calls paint on each of the panels within it, which in turn eventually calls paint on all the components. And so there's a little sequence here, which is dealt with by these, these three methods here. So if you think about the paint as being a, 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 an abstract, um, a method, an abstract class that will call component, then essentially you have to, you know, you have to say how each of these things are dealt with. So basically what happens is uses paint component to draw itself, it then draws any border that it has, remember we're using borders, coloured borders for finding out what's going on, and then it basically cycles around, it has a little loop in this paint children thing, which looks at all the things that are contained within it, and uh, calls the paint method on each of those. So that's how something gets put up on the on the, on the screen. And so, if you want to change how a component looks, then you're going to need to extend, again, back to this object-oriented stuff here, this notion of inheritance, yes. So, let's say we want to create the panel here, but let's take an example of a button, and let's say that we want to ensure that you know, we've got a row of buttons along the bottom of the screen here, and we want them all to have the same size and shape and colour and so on. So, perhaps what we do, and this is just one approach, there's, you know, there's arguments whether such an approach would be too heavyweight or not, but one approach to that would be to extend the J button class and say, you know, class my button extends j button and then you would modify how it gets uh, done in here how it gets uh, drawn within there so that it takes on a certain look that might or might not be you may or may not want to, to do something as heavyweight as this if you're if you're just changing standard characteristics like the the font and the the, 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 the color and so on but if you want to modify things to look radically different, then you need to start thinking about, about this. Similarly, if you want to you know, just put raw graphics on something, you need to start thinking about this as well, yeah? So, what happens? Well, there's this thing here, paint component, which has a graphics object passed in as a... Uh, into it, so it's got a reference to something called graphics, and basically that's that's how we're going to interact with the graphics system is through this um, object called G here. So this graphics class basically takes on the graphics environment, so that encapsulates all the ideas of drawing and graphics. So it's got methods to do different kinds of basic graphical operations like drawing different shapes, displaying text and displaying images and so on. And there's a subtle difference that we won't worry ourselves with, which is that there's different kinds of graphics objects and this is what's called a graphics 2D object. You may, if you do something more advanced or more complex, come across some of the some different ones. <coughs> Typically.
obviously now that's the main one that's used. <coughs> so if we want to do something like this, we want to do some free graphic stuff. We want to draw raw graphical material onto the screen, like shapes and text and images on the screen. We need to create some kind of area to draw graphics on. So let's do this by extending uh, a panel. So a panel is a very generic thing. Yeah? It's a rectangular area for putting stuff on the screen. So this seems the appropriate level of abstraction to work at. Yeah. So if we want to create an area for graphics like this, then we need to basically do three things. We need to create the new class, which will be an extension of this J panel, and then using the code that we saw on a slide or two ago, the place where we're going to put the graphics is within its paint component method. So that means that automatically you're going to inherit a lot of behavior there. You're going to automatically get a lot of behavior to do with things like the windows being resized or overlayered or, you know, brought out from being layered under something else or, and so on. So there's going to be a, a lot that you get from putting it in there. And then remember that these things always need to be, need to call super method to call the paint component within the J panel itself. So you need the basic setup that that panel needs. So that's how you create the basic class. And then you've got this graphics object. So let's just go back to the previous slide for a moment. So we saw this here, yeah, graphics. So we need to, to, to deal with that object. And that's where we're gonna actually put the, um, that's where we're actually gonna do, deal with the graphics thing. And again, I'll make another reference to this graphics 2D thing there. Which we're Worry too much about details of. So, the model for graphics in, in Java is one of having a notion of context and then objects, overloaded with objects, then graphical objects. So, there's various ways you can you can think about doing this. I'll pass our attendance sheet around while you. Um, so there's various ways you might think about doing graphics. One is that whenever you do something, um, you have to specify the details. So let's say um, you know I'm drawing some more things on here, and you know as you were you know writing some text, then. You, you know, I might say every time I draw a line, I have to specify how thick it is and what color it is and so on. And then when I specify a piece of text, I have to give it um, font and size and so on. Now, that's one way of doing it, but that's not the way that's done in this. The way that's done in this is that you have uh, as you go through your program, you have some notion of what's the current thickness of lines, what's the current font, what's the current colour that you're using, and so on. So, you know, you might, for consistency, you know, set this up at the beginning of doing this. So you might say, well, let's just put this as Unicode for now. You know, font equals whatever, thickness equals whatever, you know. And then you'll draw some things, and then you want to draw some thicker lines, so you say, you know, thickness equals something else, and so on. So you, at, any, at any one point in this, you've got some notion of what the current context is, what the current colour and um, pattern is that's being used for painting, what the current, how thick and what lines look like, what the, whether they're curved at the end or, or straightened off, um, whether the current thing being drawn is just being put 
straight on the screen or whether it's being moved and scaled, what the current font is, and you're clipping uh, some of it out and so on. So there's various things to do with that. Um, there's various things to do with the context. And so basically doing drawing consists of changing the context and doing the drawing and changing the context again. And the actual drawing consists of using a number of these methods. So here's an example. You draw a line. Uh, which basically just takes two points and draws a line between them. That takes from the current context, which is part of the graphics, graphics 2D object that you're drawing onto, it takes the line thickness from something called stroke and colour taken from something called paint. So at any one point, these will have certain values and you'll take those. And there's things like drawing multiple lines, you know, multiple connected lines, drawing a polygon, which is a shape made of straight lines which joins itself, fill polygons, and so on. So there's lots of shape things, there's lots more other than those as well. And then there's a, a draw string thing, which allows you to put a, a piece of text on the screen. And then there's more abstract things, draw and fill and so on, which contains some basic behavior that you might override if you're trying to do some more generic drawing. So that's given us an idea about how you put shapes on the screen. And how you refer to where they go is through some kind of coordinate system. So starting from the top left-hand corner. Because of a quirk of history about how uh, displays were created, you unusually uh, refer to things from the top left hand corner. You know, if you think about uh, high school math, you basically just have x and y coordinates like that, yeah, and you always think of this as being the first one, that's the second one. In computer graphics, you still have your x coordinate, but then you have a y coordinate going down. And there's a history to that, which is to do with um, CRT type displays. So the, the raster method in CRT type, CRT displays started from the upper left hand corner and went along in rows along, along like that. So graphic systems uh, for ease of uh, use, ease of programming, adapted that to, to how to refer to points on the screen. So you've got notions of coordinates, but then you've also got the idea that you can move things around. So as well as having this notion, this basic notion of a coordinate system, you've got an idea of transformation, and the transformations that are built into the systems are these affine transformations, which are basically which are defined as, as um, transformations that consist of rotating things, scaling them, changing their size, and translation, which means moving them in the x and y directions. And so we've got some notion of a coordinate system and how to move stuff around the screen. And so we can say that at any one point, we've got some notion of you know, the, the device, which you know, might be the whole screen, or it might be a, a window or something. And then, typically you will think about this as a window, and then you've got a notion of local coordinates that have been moved from that basic area. So you start from there, and you move that to there, and you rotate it around, and you scale it, and that gives you um, a way of, of moving things around the, around the screen, uh, you know, placing things at particular points on the screen. So again, that's another part of the, the, the graphics thing. And so the way that you do this is by these, these methods. So you can say translate, you can say rotate, and you can say scale. So if I've got an object like that, a face, and I want to move it somewhere else, or the 
various bits in that place. I want to move that up the screen. I can you know, I can use this translate method and then draw it, or I can turn it round, or I can make it bigger and smaller. And importantly, these are these don't overwrite; these accumulate. So if I um, if I draw something here, and then I apply translate and draw again, and then it would be there. Let's say let's say it's just a you know translate I move something across there, and then I do translate again, then that won't refer to some kind of absolute coordinates. It will mean that I've then moved across again from the current position, and so on. So it will keep, keep uh, adding that to the current values of, these, um, of this drawing point. This is the start point of drawing. So let's have a look at some examples here. So um, we've got a few objects here, a few graphics objects on the screen. So well, what have we got here? We've got some pieces of text. We've got, um, see the notion of, tra of transformation there, transform the text by moving it around. We've got some notion of a of a graphical object there, I've got a rectangle with its corners joined. And we've put some text centered within that. We've then drawn some lines and some closed lines, some polygons of different sizes and colors. And then finally, we've got something, I've got this thing here, which is a, you know, a circle, crooked up ellipse sort of thing. And then finally, we've got something that's quite interesting, which is a, a a transparent object, an object that's got a certain amount of transparency in it, so that you put it on the screen, and when it draws, you can see something of the things that are behind it. So you can create things like this. And so you see you've got quite a repertoire of things here. So if you're doing graphical stuff, then basically you can build up most graphical things from these primitive objects like circles and arbitrary polygons and lines and pieces of text and so on. So let's go through a piece of code for this. So there's some code that's written over several, uh, several pages. <coughs> so we've basically got something here, we call this examples, we import a lot of things so we've basically got the basic things we do when we do these swing programs, which is swing and AWT. But we also bring in something called geometry and font. And they're the things that allow us to, to do some of these transformations and to put uh, text on the screen in different fonts. And so we've seen a lot of this stuff already, yeah? So basically we're creating something that's going to extend a panel so we're going to add that then to a frame. So the window is going to be graphics 2D examples. We say we're going to close the, close the program, we close the window. And then importantly, we're going to add to the center of that window, we're going to add a new one of these panels, yeah? So that's the, the main method. So, so far, all this does is it just puts one of these panels on the screen. So that does nothing visually yet. It just it just sets it up ready for drawing. Yeah. So this is just each one of these code examples is followed by a slide that explains it. But I'll probably principally explain it by pointing at the code. So basically, we've just looked at having the swing stuff to uh, get the panel displayed in a window so far. So that that's that. So let's think about how we use these things. So we've got the idea that where we're we going to draw our graphics, well, we're going to do that by overriding this paint component method. So remember that the first thing we have to do, and importantly it is the first, when you use this super to call the constructor from the class above, you need to 
put this first in the in the method. Um, <coughs> so that goes back to remember, the superclass of uh, this examples class of J panel. So that calls everything that's needed to do the basic setup for a J panel, and then we get the, <coughs> the graphics objects, and we we for abstruse historical reasons cast it into something called a graphics 2D object. So now we, we've got some defaults. When you set up one of these things, these things like transformations and lines and colors and fonts are all going to have some default values. So um, I can't remember what they are, but you know the default transform is, is, is do nothing. Uh, the default line is of a certain thickness and so on standard font and standard size for that font and so on. The initial colour is black on you know on a white background I think. So there's notions like that that are that will just pop up automatically. So these are you know these are objects within this graphics class. So they've got set methods and get methods so we can get them and, and, and store them. And then we get to do something do that. Um, Versus appears. What's going on here? That was odd. How bizarre. So we're going to draw a string on this. So we, you know, we, we've got a method within the graphics class, the graphics 2D class, called draw string. So we can draw it uh, using the default font at a certain position, yeah? So string and then where it goes. And then we can, um, we can change the font. So we can create a, a font object. We say Arial, plain, I think just means not italicized or bold. And 18 is the, the size of it, the point size of it. And then we can say we're going to change the font. So remember, remember this notion of context, yeah? In draw string, we don't say draw string with a particular um, with a particular font. We change the font and then we do the drawing. So when that string is drawn there, that's more or less the same command as that apart from being a slightly different position. But <coughs> because the font context has changed, the font's changed in the context in that G2 object, when you draw it this time, it will appear in that new font. And that will appear differently to the one above. So that's that. So, again, I think these notes are basically what I said during the uh, during the looking at the code. So we we uh, get the graphics 2D object, we save the attributes, we display a string for default font, and then we display it in a larger font. One minor point, but important one, is what these x and y values contain. Yeah. So we said draw string on the previous slide. Yeah. We said 2020, and they're referring to uh, pixel values from the top uh, left-hand corner of that component, that panel. But what point does that refer to? Well, it refers to the left hand of the baseline. So if you're drawing the word graphics there, that 2020 would refer to, to that point there, the, 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 the baseline at the left-hand side. Which is obvious, I think. I think that's the obvious place to start from. Um, so that's that's a very simple thing. So what about drawing some other objects? Well, we can think about drawing a rectangle, yeah? So if we're drawing a rectangle, we need to draw four, <laughs> we need to use four items, yeah, we need to know four things, four parameters. We need to know where it is, which is specified by x and y, and what size it is, which is given by a width and a height. 
I get all these uh, pixel counts, these, these values. And then we can see how we can use this. We can then draw lines, yeah? So we can draw some diagonals that can show where the center of it is, just again, by drawing those lines. Now, if we want to put the, set, the, the string in that rectangle at the center, we need to work out where the center of the text is. So how do we do that? Well, it's a little bit complicated and I won't go through the details of it because it's, you know, it's, it's math and you can, you can just sort of look at the details. But basically, what we're doing is we're getting some details about the height of the font and things like that. You know, how big is this font? And then we're using that to, and, and, and the bounds on a particular, you can, you know, you can, you can get, you can get the, the, the bounds, basically a bounding box around a particular string and so on. So we can do that kind of thing using these. And then by doing some, some math here, yeah, by looking at halfway across in the X, so we find the center basically from this. And then we find the uh, the distance to the to the to the starting point using these these, these things here. The sense talking about the uh, vertical size of the of the font, and then we can find a position to start drawing at. So we can draw a string centered within that rectangle. Uh, the detail there is a bit fiddly, and it's not not worth uh, going through in detail. It's really easy to have to look at it. So again, this is just what I've said, yeah, um, drawing rectangle, drawing lines, and then if we want to put the text in it, we have to get the bounds and then get something about the distance from the baseline to where, it, uh, where it's going to sit, and then we can do a bit of simple math to work out where it goes. So that's about, that's another example about text positioning. So if we think back to where this, uh, let's actually go back to that. Let's go back to uh, is it slide 10 or something like that. Or slide 12, there we are. If we go back to this, we've got this part, yeah? We've drawn the thing in the default font. We've made the font different. We've put it centered like that. So now we're going to look at what happens if you apply transform to that. So let's go on to that. So what we're going to do now, well, we're going to show how one of these transform methods works. So fairly arbitrarily, let's, let's choose rotate, yeah? So again, we don't apply that rotation to the individual string. We don't say draw string, blah, 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 with a transformation of 180 degrees, with a transformation of pi radians. We say, um, let's change the context for drawing. So what we're saying here is that we, we have got some notion of rotation within the current graphics context, yeah? So within the current context, we're going to say, from now on, until I change that back, we're going to draw everything upside down. So however many draw methods I put in here, they're all going to have that rotation applied to them. So here we just do one thing. We rotate something by pi radians, you know, a, a full... Uh, turn full turn upside down then we draw that string same string again and then we transform it back remember that we saved something called no transform <coughs> earlier on so we can do that which overwrites that yeah so that sets the, that that one sets the transform to a particular rotation that one undoes it so this is quite interesting here you know you've got um in terms of all this stuff about set methods and get methods, there's the notion of a transformation, a transform. And you can set it directly 
But you can also access that same thing through uh, things like rotate and scale and so on. So you've got some notion of rotation there. And again, you know, this interplay between the graphics content context and the draw methods is particularly important here. Particularly subtle there. Uh, what is the difference between rotate and draw string? So we rotate the string and then we draw it. So why we uh, because to rotate, you have to have a point to rotate around. Yeah? Yes, but the rotate method, what does that mean? Rotate, <coughs> it, it says that anything is applying to a graphics object, you know, a graphics 2D object. So basically, it's saying that anything that you draw after that point, until you change the, the, the transformation again, anything you draw after that point will be rotated. So at any point when you're doing one of these graphics things, you've always got a context that consists of, you know, font and color and so on. And one of the things that exists in there is this transformation. And so if you want to change the position of things, you do that first. So basically you're saying, what this is saying is change the kind of default way of drawing so that things are upside down now and then when you get to this line you you change it back again so when you've got that far yeah when you've got to the end of this line you haven't drawn anything yet you've just changed the context in which things can get drawn and it's only when you get onto this line that you actually draw the string itself but there's no way to combine these together you can't say draw a string with a particular rotation. You change the context first and then you do the actual drawing. So that's a, a, a very core thing to bear in mind when you're doing this Java 2D stuff is that a lot of the time you'll need to change the context first and then do the drawing. There's a big separation of concerns there which may or may not be the best way to do it but I think it's not a bad way of doing it. Um, does that make sense? Uh, to say where where it goes on the screen. How it rotates. How much you no, the, these have got nothing to do with rotation. Oh, okay. These are to do with where on the screen you put it. Yeah. Okay. So that's to do with saying that I want to put it there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so does that make sense? Yeah, good. Right. So here's you know some more details about this. So let's have a look at look at this. So now we've we've looked at text. So now we think about um, um, different kinds of objects. So we've got something here which we we've got a We've got a data structure, a pair of data structures that are arrays of numbers. And these are the local coordinates for a shape. Yeah, so if we look back at the diagram, we see this shape, this five sided shape, this pentagon, yeah, irregular pentagon. And that shape is specified by this, <coughs> these five coordinates, yeah? fairly obvious. And so, again, we've gone back at the beginning. This is one continuous program. So at the beginning of the previous, uh, the previous um, slide, at the end of the previous slide, we set the transformation back to, z back to nothing. So our default drawing position is now back in the top left-hand corner. So what we're going to do now is draw four objects. So we chain, we do translate. So we're going. That means we're going to move the um, move the thing across to there. Yeah, we're going to move the default drawing position across by two hundred. 
And then we're going to draw with these coordinates relative to that new starting position. And then <coughs> we draw a polyline, which is an open-ended polygon. We then translate downwards by, and then we draw another polygon, we draw a polygon that time, which is a closed shape. We then translate again. So remember that I said that these things are cumulative. So by the time we've reached here, we've got 200 there, plus zero, plus zero, and 60 there twice. So we're going to be starting drawing at the position 200 across and 120 down. And this time we've changed the, the, the length, the width of the um, other thing. So when we call this same method here, because the context has changed, the, si the, the size of the line used is going to change, yeah? So, you know, if we look back at the diagram, we see that we're onto this one now. You see it's got a thicker um, width of line there. And then we go back to, um, and we, we, we do something else. We do it slightly differently. We do a filled polygon with a, a colour and so on. So you can see how to draw basic shapes there. And this is just basically saying what I've said, yeah? So it takes a sequence of points and draws lines. You've got a sequence of translates, and that's what it does. And then, again, we translate, so we move even further down. And now we've got things like filled arcs and ellipses. So again, you know, other shapes. And the details of these don't matter too much. You know, you've basically you've got an ellipse, so you've got, you know, uh, a size and shape again, so yeah, similar to a rectangle, and it's filled in. So this is interesting. So here we've got a, a, a transparent object. So I talked about transparency. So this is transparent, yeah, this red rectangle here. I can see through it. I can see the things that are behind it. And there's a relatively straightforward way to do that, which is, as I'm sure most of you know, colours in a, a system like this consist of values to red, green and blue, how much of those you mix together. So if you, but this has got the four things in. So the fourth thing is how transparent it is. So you say red, red green, blue and transparency. So that says it's half transparent. If it was zero, I can't remember which way around it is, but I think zero means you can s there's nothing there, and one means you can't see through it at all. Perhaps it's the other way around. Um, and so, well, that's just a summary of what I've said. Like I say, all these examples have got some code and then a slide that explains it, which is primarily for revision and so on. So, let's have a think about this. So we've looked at an example. We've looked at how we can draw the, all these things now. So if you put all that code into, into a, a program, it works fine. You get this. You get this coming up in a window. So we've seen, and that's basically all you need to do. So do any kind of graphics of any sophistication. It's just carefully combining these basic components, yeah? So, it's complicated. It's, I think it's needlessly complicated. Again, there's lots of accidents of history and things that have been implemented in slightly complex ways. So, some of these things have integer coordinates, some need floats, some need doubles. That's sometimes sensible but generally fairly pointless but you'll just have to look up to see what, what's needed. There are also inconsistencies in how um, angles are specified. You know that there are these two systems, yeah? There's degrees where you've got 360 degrees going around in a circle and then you've got radians where you've got two pi radians which is mathematically a much more sound uh, way of, of describing a circle. 
uh, and some methods like draw arc needed angling degrees and rotate takes an angle in radians and that's that's just bad design there's no rationale for that um, and then there are, there are more general shape objects so there are things that can be uh, either principally will be overridden by uh, more specific things so there are kind of higher level more abstract things that allow you to define your own shapes and so on so a few details just to finish for the last five minutes so we've talked about the paint method and we've said that that acts reactively to things in the environment yeah so that acts when you've got something like resizing the window or bringing the window to the front or changing the values of some of the things within the window. But that's not under the control of the typical programmer. That's under the control of things that are hidden deep within the swing system. So we might, if we make some changes which aren't picked up by this, want to do a, a paint thing. You know, say we're trying to create some kind of uh, animation type thing and we want to, to force it to paint on a particular schedule. Then there are methods called paint, repaint and paint immediately. And so repaint basically just says try and repaint when you can which is um, occasionally useful. That's more useful at the lower level. But most, most uh, importantly, there's also paint immediately, which makes it a priority. It says paint, it's paint it now. So you might want to do that if you want to do, say, an animation that's updated every, every second or every, you know, so many times a second. You might have some kind of loop that had some kind of time delay and then you did paint immediately to update it. So that's, um, that's that. These are a few slides of details, really. There's this notion of double buffering, which I'm sure one of you have come across before. So there's the idea that when you're doing graphics, the best thing to do is to execute the graphics code sort of in the background and then display it. So this is what happens here. As you're going through the program, it makes a copy of it, and only when that copy is full, is, is fully constituted, does it transfer it to the screen. So you don't you don't see things assembling. You don't see the window gradually appearing because it's basically it's been constructed out of, off the side and so on. A final thing you can do with this is you can put images on here. So images in the sense of images from image files or data structures that contain images. So you can, you can take an image file. And importantly, perhaps importantly, remember that in Java, files and URLs are, to a first approximation, interchangeable. So Java was designed with a, a web a notion of the web as file system in the back of their minds. And so you can have a URL instead of a file if you want to get a file from somewhere else. And so then there's a draw image method. Um, some of these things, there are some complexities, which if you get into this, you might want to look at, which is about how long it takes, because images can take quite a long time to load and so on. So there are some complexities to do with that. But if you're just displaying an image, one or two small images, you don't need to worry about that so much. So there's a bit of code here, there's a bit of code to, to set something up here. And then more importantly, there's the beef of how you do this. So again, you have paint component as before you override the paint component in the original panel and then you by super the paint component and then the thing we've seen already which is getting the graphics object and then you do you simply do graphics graphics object dot draw image and you specify the image and <coughs> its position and you know we've already got that we've got the 
we've got the image in from uh, something called Get Image, which is a you know is, is a way of getting getting things out of the uh, the current directory, basically. And the end result of that is is, a, is the image displayed on one of these panels. So um, there's a few subtleties here, in particular the use of this media tracker object. So the point there is that you've got something that waits for an image to be loaded into the program before it starts displaying. So uh, there's a there's a little bit of complexity to that to do with the fact that loading images takes a, a bit of time, so you need to allow all that time. So that's basically that. Uh, that's basically that. I want to you know I've basically said about graphics and the coordinate system and this notion of context then draw, change context then draw, and we've looked at how to display text and graphical things and images. So that basically gives you a quite a sophisticated toolkit to do any kind of graphics. So we'll finish there. Thank you.